Welcome to my old workshop. This video is all about stripping out the old workshop and moving the Boxford lathe. But first, my only vice. This is definitely these days my only vice, and it's a very big vice. It's one that I bought about, I don't know, 30 years ago from a second hand shop, and it's been much used and much abused over the years. When I first bought it, I painted it with blue hammerite, which has lasted well over the years, but it's time now for a bit of a facelift. I'm using a Proxon angle grinder to remove the rust. This angle grinder is a very useful tool and it's not fitted with a grinding disc at all, it's like a flapper wheel on there and it really cuts through the rust and the loose paint on the vise. This by the way is in the outer part of the workshop right next to a wide open garage door which is just as well because it's making quite a lot of dust. So I'll stick in an impromptu health and safety warning, when doing jobs like this Please wear a breathing mask and possibly eye protection in case any metal chippings or bits of paint fly off into your eyes. You can't be too careful where health is concerned. I'm not going to get too obsessive about this vice, I'm just cleaning it up and I'm going to paint it. But before that the bench needs cleaning up. This is my friend Martin Shaw with the vacuum cleaner and I'm continuing to remove more rust and paint from the vice. I didn't want to get paint all over the bench, so we broke up a piece of the white melamine that's normally on the workbench in the workshop to use as a base for painting the vise. And a quick wipe over with some panel wipe, which is naphtha, on a rag, cleaned it up a little bit. And now without further ado, the vise is in position and it's time to do a bit of painting. The paint that I'm using is Phoenix Precision Paints Single Pack Etch Primer. Really though, I'm only using up the contents of the tin because the tin's nearly empty. While the paint on the vise is drying in the outer part of the workshop, it's into the inner part of the workshop to have a look at the progress so far. Well, the workbenches are pulled out from the wall, the worktops have been taken off the stands. All the drawers are fully empty at the far end of the workshop, but it still seems to have quite a lot of things in it. It amazes me how much junk I've collected over the last 30 years or so. Quite a lot of it's gone in the skip. Panning the camera around the workshop though shows me that yes, we are making an impression on it at last. Now comes the fun part, we need to move the box for the lathe, but after moving the smart and brown lathe, this will be like a walk in the park. As you watch this video, it doesn't seem like I'm doing any of the work, but that's not strictly true. I'm operating the camera at the moment. We got a bit stuck at this point because Martin wasn't strong enough or heavy enough to pull the lathe onto the rollers, so I stepped in and did so. As you can clearly see, Martin is struggling to move the lathe, he's a bit weedy. But it's not strength that's required, it's body weight. So I got Martin to oil the rollers, and I initially pulled the lathe onto the rollers by myself. Martin's now continuing where I left off. Now it's a simple job to do one end at a time and move it across the rollers until we get it in line with the door. Moving this lathe was so much easier than moving the smart and brown lathe, that was terminally heavy, and even with two of us with a crowbar, it was still an effort to move it anywhere. But this is not too bad. In no time at all, the Boxford is on the move. I kept stopping the camera while I helped Martin put the rollers in the right place. In this workshop, most of the floor is tarmac, so the rollers don't actually roll very well at all. But because the rollers are oily, and now obviously the underneath of the lathe is oily, it slides on the rollers, which is fine. And here it is, conveniently by the door, ready to be picked up on Saturday to move to the new workshop. I'm editing this video on the Monday morning before the Saturday, so it won't be long until all of this equipment is in my new workshop. Martin's coming with me over to the workshop tomorrow, and we're going to do some more work inside it. I'm not taking any steam engines over to the new workshop just yet, but I will be taking things like this, a single phase to three phase converter. If you've been watching the video series about my new workshop, you will have noticed that there is already a Burgess bandsaw like this over there. This is my other one, the one I've had for many years. And here looking very forlorn on the floor is my old air compressor. This is a Wisp Air air compressor and it's like a fridge compressor, it's very quiet. I have quite a lot of random metal stock in the workshop and here's some of it. Having a good stock of raw materials ready to turn, mill, file and drill is a good idea. And normally my metal stock sat on this table, I don't know how it held the weight over the years as it's made of plastic. 
but it must be good quality plastic because it's always been okay. I'm using this for the main workbench so I can continue making the videos up until the time that I take the last item out of the workshop over to the new one. I'm going to be rebuilding this beam engine. I need to make a new crank web for it and fit it. I have the casting and I will have to machine it on the lathe in the outer part of the workshop by the door. I'll also be putting a lot of time into my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine. Here's a story so far in the box, it's a Stuart Victoria. This series is only viewable by my Patreon supporters. The Stuart Models Victoria is an ideal engine for a beginner to make because all the parts are quite large and it's very easy to machine. I need to keep quite a lot of the tooling in the workshop until the final move. This is my surface plate and scribing block, and next to the beam engine is my set of die holders. I'm also going to keep my Action Man deserter firmly hung from the shelf until I move. Also remaining until I finally move to the new workshop are my sets of drawers full of nuts and bolts. And there you have it, the workshop is nearly ready to move. Well, almost. This is a very dirty job, and as you can see, Martin has been carrying bits of metal about all day. And as Martin is a builder, generally speaking, his hands are never clean anyway. So I thought I would introduce him to this most wondrous stuff that I use. It's called Relieve, and it's for getting your hands really clean, surprisingly clean. Will it work on Martin's hands? Well, just keep watching. Over the years, I've tried and used most of the available hand cleaners, and none of them come close to this stuff. You don't need much, Martin's using far too much, he just dipped his whole hand into the pot. And now what he's doing is rubbing it into his hands. No water yet, this is dry, the stuff is on his hands. And to illustrate this, here are my hands, with a lot less on than Martin's using. So like most hand cleansers of this type, it has an abrasive. It may be pine cellulose. That's what it says on the tub anyway. This stuff is eco-friendly, it doesn't contain plastic particles. It also contains glycerin, so your hands come out feeling quite moisturised, quite unlike the effect I would normally get by using washing up liquid. And after a while, Martin's hands look like this. Oh dear, it's removed his tattoos as well. And his hands have got physically smaller, they've shrunk. Well, no, actually, these are the hands of my daughter Charlotte. We thought we would put them into the video, just for the entertainment value. Martin's hands haven't shrunk, and his tattoos are intact. And look how clean his hands are. I've known Martin for many years and I've never known his hands to be this clean. The website address has been on screen for a while. And I would recommend to every one of my viewers who have dirty hands to get some of this stuff. It really is top class. I'd like to mention that this is not a sponsored advert. I have nothing to do with the company and I didn't get paid for making the video about this stuff. It's just so good I wanted to tell everybody about it and it doesn't leave any smell on your hands at all after you've used it, quite unlike some other hand cleansers. Don't take my word for it, go on the website and buy yourself a tub. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.